And as we look at general fund expenses, 71% of it is tied to staffing. So in looking at ways to significantly, significantly reduce the budget, trying to cut three or $4 million, it's impossible to do that without staffing reductions. So that will be a significant part of our discussion on the 22nd. Relevant, important, convenient. This is ONN. Evening item 6B, which is the 2025 budget update uh, to be presented uh, by our city manager, Jay Burney. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Again, for the record, Jay Burney, City Manager. And for those of you waiting for the next round of public comments, it's me, and then we're back to you. So you're this close. You're this close. So tonight's budget discussion is to set the stage for our study session that's upcoming on, on October 22nd. I'm going to start with a bit of an overview of where we are leading up to the 22nd, as well as the balance of some enhancement requests that I mentioned uh, to you when I was back here in September um, that I want to share with you tonight. And none of the enhancements you're going to see tonight that are the newer ones have any impact, any impact on the general fund. And I'll talk about those. I'm then going to talk about some decision-making priorities and looking at potential budget reductions. So you just get a little bit of a window into the lens of kind of high, how I and the department directors have worked through what we're going to bring you on the 22nd. So as an overview for the community, we have two different revenue sources that fund our programs and services. We have dedicated funds that provide a stable source of revenue for things like our utilities, parks, Inspire Olympia, housing homelessness, and transportation. Some of those are tied to rates like utilities and, and fees that are more predictable, and the council has more influence uh, in control and not decision-making in some of those dedicated funds. The general fund revenues are more fluid. They're less predictable uh, and less stable and are the largest portion of our funding. The general fund is comprised largely of sales tax, property tax, and business and occupation tax. Our current balancing position sits at $6.7 million based on some early work in looking at revenue assumptions, fund balances, and some early thoughts on reductions that I discussed with the council on September 16th that you supported. So we've gone from a deficit of uh, just under $12 million. We've done some early work. Uh, we're at a deficit of about $6.7 million. And when I come back to you on the 22nd of October, we're going to talk about how we <clears throat> take that $6.7 million deficit and shrink it even further. I also wanted to put in perspective for the community and for the council, when we talk about the $6.7 million, um, it's it's 6% of our general fund. So that's $6.7 million, uh, 6.7 million out of $116 million. So just, I wanted to give a sense of scale for the community. It's not insignificant, but when you look at it in the larger picture of our general fund, um, our work is not near as hard as it could be if this number was a larger percentage. So I just want to put that in context. And then as we look at general fund expenses, 71% of it is tied to staffing. So in looking at ways to significantly, significantly reduce the budget, trying to cut three or $4 million, it's impossible to do that without staffing reductions. So that will be a significant part of our discussion on the 22nd. I'm going to jump into enhancements first and then talk further about criteria for evaluating reductions. Just as a reminder, I shared these enhancement requests already with you early on. These are the significant um, enhancements that impact the general fund at this point in time. Uh, we have uh, new public defense standards that are coming into play that we're planning for. That adds about half a million dollars to your budget. Um, we may or may not have an annexation discussion with the county next year. Uh, we've got more conversation with the council on that. But if we make a decision to move forward with those conversations, we'll need some, some budget to accommodate the, that. And then um, as we move forward with the new community oversight of law enforcement uh, and some youth council work, we've got some additional staffing and some supplies and stuff that support that work. Those are all um, included in your budget and they're, they're, they're part of that $6.7 million. So not on top of that, they're already in. <clears throat> And then there's a balance of, of enhancement requests that um, have offsetting revenue sources. So any of the ones that you see here uh, will be in front of you in the future, but they, they do not have a general fund impact. Um, we have a fire master mechanic on the list. I think this, the council knows we provide fleet services for the region in our fire repair facility. Uh, and the number of vehicles is growing and we have more requests for service. So this uh, expense of adding another mechanic is gonna open up more possibilities. It's gonna, it includes additional uh, building space so we can take on um, some additional vehicles. And all of the um, 
the charges uh, for this position are, are gathered through rates. So the rates that we charge for the work pay for this position. It's gonna open up more capacity for us as well. Uh, in public works, same, same difference. We've uh, got a new master mechanic on the list. Uh, when we looked at the staffing levels, so the number of the fleets that we maintain, our fleet has been growing over the years as we've, got, as we've had new programs and brought new vehicles online. Also, the newer vehicles are a lot more complicated to work on than the older vehicles. They've got a lot more things uh, for us to, 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 to consider. Uh, so we're adding another master mechanic. This is covered through our internal funds. So it gets, it gets distributed amongst all the departments. So everybody pays a small piece of that. The next two uh, in stormwater, uh, there's a, a, a maintenance worker too. We received a grant um, in 2021 from Ecology to per purchase a second street sweeper to improve water quality. This enhancement request is covered 50% um, through that grant and 50% through utility rates. So this adds permanent, permanent staffing to operate that sweeper. We also have a maintenance one uh, position. This provides additional staffing to create a full-time crew of to safely perform vegetation work in the right-of-way we need a crew of three at a minimum. So we need to add one more maintenance worker to, to perform that work. And again, this is covered by utility rates. And then finally, um, within strategic communications, uh, council probably has, last year we had, on top of Andrew being in the control room there, we had two other individuals that were part-time employees and we found some money to make that happen. Uh, we need some more staffing on Tuesday nights to work side by side with Andrew to help us manage um, everything that's here. So we're adding an uh, audiovisual video production specialist that replaces two three quarter time emergency hires that we had last year. This position provides redundancy when broadcasting council meetings. So for example, when Andrew needs a night off, we need backup. And so th th this provides for that. Um, and adding this ensures continuity and provides uh, resources when there are vacations or illnesses. Um, and this is um, project is funded because it's being covered through our cable franchise fees. So that's how we're paying for that one. So questions on the new ones before I move on. Okay. Seeing none. So as you know, I've been working with department directors to um, develop a list of reductions to further um, reduce our, our $6.7 million deficit. And we've really, I've separated this into kind of two tiers. Tier one is reductions that we make, but they preserve our community priorities. So the community has told us over the last several years of uh, survey work that public safety, housing homelessness, climate, economic development, transportation, and our equity and belonging work are high priorities for, for the community and they wanna see investments made in those areas. So um, priority one seeks to preserve all of those. When we get into tier two, uh, we start to impact our ability to deliver on those priorities. Um, I've asked the directors to look at reductions at this point in time, only in tier one that allow us to maintain and preserve our community priorities. However, I'm also going to bring with, with me on the 22nd, because I know some of you will ask and may want to know what it looks like if we start to get into tier two. I think it's important that the community see that it's gonna be hard for us to fully close the $6.7 million gap without getting into the, the tier two, without um, getting into impacts on those, on those community priority areas. So I'll bring you that look so that you can see it and the community can see it. Um, and it's part of the decision-making that we'll have to do. Part of the, also the other decision-making criteria I'm using here for any of those tiers is we have regulatory requirements that we have to meet uh, and risk that we have to consider in terms of city operations. Uh, we have to make sure that um, everything that we do aligns with those community priorities and the work that we have to do. And does it result in a sustainable budget? And I've really challenged the department directors to look for creative, innovative ways to support the work that we do. And so part of what you'll see is not just reductions. Part of what you're going to see is some really creative work done by department directors to look for different ways to fund and different ways to approach the work that we do and different ways to become a bit more efficient in some of the things that we do. So um, I'm looking forward to sharing that. It's imperative that we earn the community's trust. Uh, it's imperative that we be transparent about the reductions and we center it, uh, those that work on our residents and visitors and those decisions that we make. And that will be the work that we start to do on the 22nd. It's the work that you do every year as a council when you make these decisions is to center on our community. 
So when I come back to you on the 22nd, um, I'm going to bring you an updated balancing position. We've got some additional adjustments to baseline and revenue. I'm also going to bring you a, uh, a list of recommendations for permanent reductions and some delayed spending, which will get us down to a more um, reasonable um, position for budget balancing. I'm also going to talk about city council support. So there's been some conversation about uh, support for council. Just a sneak peek at that. We have found a way to do that with existing resources. I'm going to bring you a proposal on the 22nd for how we're going to do that. And um, again, I want to thank the combination of Susan, Debbie, Stacy, Don for putting their heads together around this and giving me a solution that's going to help us with council support. And I'll share that um, on the 22nd. And then uh, I'll also talk a bit about revenue options. We haven't talked a lot about revenue to this point. Um, you do have council manic revenue options at your disposal should you want them to balance the budget this year, things like municipal utility tax. So I'll bring you examples. I'm not likely to make a recommendation to you that you exercise any of those revenue options at this point in time, but it's important that I put them in front of you because they're decisions that you get to make, that not decisions I get to make. So I want to make sure that you know what they are and what they, what's at your disposal so that if you want to make those decisions, you, you have them in front of you. And so I'll bring those to you as well. Uh, and really, uh, as we look at the budget calendar, as I, as I finish up here, we're going to be at the Finance Committee uh, next stop on the 21st. That's a busy night. We're going we're gonna to talk about utility rates and fees and then dedicated revenue sources, um, uh, things like Inspire, Olympia, and, and, and other dedicated revenue sources that we have and those kinds of recommendations, LTAC, PBIA. We'll dig into those. You'll, as a full council, will then see those on the 29th uh, is when the full council will start to see that. Again, I'll be here on the 22nd. We've got uh, two rounds of public hearings. As council is aware, we used to only have one public hearing on the operating budget. That's the one that's typically in mid-November. Um, a couple of years back, we added a second public hearing on the budget up front. So people in our community won't have a chance to have seen all your decisions to that point, but they can weigh in as we go along and give you some input as we go along based on what they're hearing so far. And that, that might help shape our discussion even further as we get towards final budget balancing. And our goal is to have final budget balancing on November 19th, Tuesday, November 19th. That's, that's our plan. Um, so that is what I have for you tonight. It's just, again, I just wanted to give you a quick update just to set the stage for the conversation coming to you on the 22nd and see if you have any questions on anything that I've shared or approach or any of that. Thank you, Jay. Um, Council Member Gilman. Jay, in your um, tiers of uh, priorities, um, I, I just wondered if you could clarify, as, my, as I understand it, utilities are a, a separate rates pay for the service. Not, so, so we're not talking about, we're not concerned about um, garbage and recycling and stormwater maintenance. And, would you just speak to that for a moment? Yeah, thank you. So the utility rates are a dedicated funding source. They're an, what we call an enterprise fund. So they're rates that that pay for the services. So um, we adjust those rates based on the services that we need to provide. So for example, some of those enhancement requests that I mentioned, the maintenance workers affect utility rates. Um, the other things um, that affect utility rates um, this year in particular is we're having an affordable housing conversation in land use committee um, that will make its way uh, to the council. And so um, we took that conversation to the UAC this last week as well about impacts on rates to um, start to put a grant uh, fund together for utility work to help support infrastructure. And so that's in there. Um, however, to your point, it's also very important that we keep utility rates for our ratepayers as low as we can and comparable in the market. So even though you're not going to see the level of reductions in the utilities that you're going to see in the general fund. I have asked for the utilities to keep their increases to a minimum. So the only enhancements you see are the ones I brought you across the other utilities. There's very, there's, there's no other enhancement requests. I've, I've asked them to stay status quo as much as possible. So you'll see that reflected in, in lower rates. And if, if you could just offer us one more reassurance while we didn't name the utilities, as a, a top priority in your tier one, they are absolutely an essential city service and a, and a top priority for the organization. Is that absolutely. Correct? So while I didn't mention utilities, I didn't mention a lot of city services, the core services we provide. The list I gave you was 
the priority areas of the community has said, hey, if you're going to do anything, make sure you do this stuff. And this is stuff we want to see a lot of energy and focus. However, we have a whole other part of our budget that's dedicated to our core services, like delivering our utilities, um, some of the, the street repair and, and maintenance work that, that has to be done. All of that is, is within your budget. And um, I'm not going to say not impacted because some of those have impacts by some of the reductions you'll see. And we'll get into that a little more. But I appreciate that question and clarification. Just because it's not listed there doesn't mean it's not an important critical service. Yes, and we know that those are the community's priorities based on mediums that we've used, like yes. the community-wide survey and other surveys that we've conducted um, as a city uh, out to the public to solicit that feedback. Yes. Yes. Uh, any additional questions or comments for the city manager? All right, seeing none, thank you. I know that this is uh, this is a tough time for all of us here at the city, both internally and as well as out in the community, but we appreciate your work. We appreciate you coming to us and bringing us options. Um, we look forward to hearing more on the 22nd. And um, I will just say that there was one bullet that said, uh, you know, equity and belonging. And one thing I think is important for the community to understand is that while that looks like it's a separate bullet, um, on on the slide there, equity and belonging is critical to everything that we do as a city and as a community. And so uh, touching that affects every single issue that we do and all of the business that we do here at the city. Uh, and when I talk about equity, I'm not just talking about race. I am talking about everyone who lives in this community based on race, sexual orientation, and so on and so on. So this work is critical in terms of understanding that when it comes to housing, public safety, and all of the other issues uh, that are within the budget, that, um, that that work is certainly a priority. And I'm speaking to this because it's something that is usually immediately on the chopping block, uh, at least historically in in this country. Uh, and so we know that we have to do the opposite because we know what the cost is of not prioritizing that work. And so I appreciate you for uh, making sure that that stays as a top priority, uh, not only for the, the city council, but for our community. So thank you, Jay. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, um, that takes us back to the remainder of our public comment uh, for this evening. Um, and uh, I do just want to remind uh, those who are present that you have two minutes for your comments. Uh, the clock is to my right, your left. And just to remind you again to please refrain from expressing your support or opposition to a ballot measure or candidate uh, uh, that is running for office at the federal, state, or local level. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor pro tem. All right. Um, so we have uh, quite a number of names and not as many bodies. Um, so I'll try to move through this uh, quickly. Um, uh, Kama Fitzgerald, followed by Julie Hustoff, followed by April Miller. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is April Miller. I'm an Evergreen grad, minimum wage food service worker, and an organizer with Olympia DSA. Uh, you've heard from me before on this issue and a couple of others. I wanted to speak to you and those assembled to say that a lot of misinformation has circulated about the Workers' Bill of Rights. Every single piece of public information I have seen in opposition to these proposals has contained one or another piece of inaccurate information, from claiming the proposal is for an immediate jump to $24 an hour, to claiming there will be no standard phase-in corresponded to what other cities have enacted. The actual content of what we are proposing in full is publicly available in the Olympian in their coverage so far. A victory for the... We will not give up! <laughs> <laughs>